It's supposed to be important for more than big fish and I have. It seems to be the case more often than not. I remember Jason as an effortlessly happy boy. We take delight in the simplest of things. We spend days scaling the mango trees in the garden, existing purely off a diet of mangoes. We emerge every so often brandishing a selection of fruit, cheeks bulging on that beaming smile. My childhood memories of us three brothers on the farm are my most precious. One of the troubles in Zimbabwe, the family moved across the UK in 2002. A big change for us all, but one that Jason took in his stride. He finished his last four years at school here at Bradford and grew into a strong, handsome young man, a talented sportsman and a strong member of any team he was part of. I remember on some of the training runs we've been done together, just how much he had grown up and how robust he had become. It came as no surprise to us all. And Jason passed out as one of only 13 originals in his troop at Limston. He was never proud until on his pass out day. I remember the, proud, the pride in his voice. He spoke to me in Afghanistan over the phone. I really wish I could have been there. Jason carried his lighthearted approach to life through school at Rizawi, Peterhouse, and Burford, and will forever be remembered for it. It shone through his sport, his relationships, his career and form the seed which grew to the more quality I admired most of him. Cheerfulness in the face of adversity. I have no doubt to offer his both in training and operation of all the So on this day, let's not remember what Jason died for, but what he lived for. He lived for his family and his friends. We could be proud of and I'm certain his friends likewise held him the highest regard. We all drew great strength from his radiant character. He lived for his beloved fiancée Victoria. He was a spark on his eye and a spring in his head. His first and only love. He lived for his pride as an outstanding young girl marine. He stood in honor in his green berry and served the cause selfless, selflessly. He's a great tribute to us as a family and to the wider core family. We have been so supportive through this hard time. If we ever do consider what our destiny died for, let it be that he laid down his life alongside his friends who had done the same for him. These men were as much brothers as I was to him. And from Paul, from John 15:13, greater love has no man in this than a man lay down his life for his friends. To finish, I would like to read a poem Victoria chose for Jason. It is called All Is Well by Henry Scott Holland. This is nothing at all. I've only slipped away into the next room. Whatever we were to each other, we still are. Please call me by my old familiar name. Speak of me in the same easy way you always did. But no difference in your tone, where no four steps, celebrity or sorrow. Laugh as you always laugh at the, at the little jokes we enjoyed together. Play, smile, and pray for me. Let my name be the household name it always was. Spoken without the shadow of a ghost in it. Life means all it ever meant. It is the same as it ever was. Death is never full, so why should I be out of mind because I am out of sight? I am but waiting for you. For an interval very near. All is well. Nothing is past or lost. One brief moment and all will be as it was before. Only better and happier. Together forever. A reading from the Revelation of Jesus Christ to St. John the Divine. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. Then I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will 
wipe away every tear from their eyes, death will be no more. Mourning, crying, and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. We sing the hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. The visionary St. John in the book of Revelation, words we heard a little earlier, that strange and often wonderful book which brings the New Testament to a close. His vision was full of hope, and for St. John that hope and vision were founded on Jesus Christ, whose death and resurrection gave him the ground for hoping and daring to believe the mess and the madness which is so often what we see when we look around the world, that the mess and the madness of human life and death will not have the final word. Gathered here today as we are around the coffin of a young man whose life, full of promise and hope, seems to have been cut short by the brutality and madness of an act of war. All that hopeful, idealistic talk of new heaven and new earths may seem like a bit of wishful thinking. Some of you here will share St. John's faith, and some of you inevitably won't. And yet, the fact that we are here, honouring Jason and honouring all those who, like him, are prepared to give everything in this life in the cause of something better, more decent, more hopeful, this should tell us that as human beings, when we strip away the scepticism, the world weariness that comes from looking too hard at the bad side of our maker, that we have at our core a sense of hopefulness, a willingness to believe that we can make a difference to life, we can change, even if it's only here and there, little by little, that we can change things for the better. And in coming here today, we are not simply mourning a death. We are celebrating a life. And we are affirming that in the end, life is far more powerful than death. Jason, as Richard has said in that fine tribute to his brother, Jason belongs now to a company of exceptional people. But like all of those whose names will be remembered as heroes, as those who gave their lives in the service of their country and in support of their comrades, like all of them, Jason didn't set out to be a hero. Real heroes never do. He loved life, and he would hardly have been anxious to let it go. He enjoyed its pleasures, he enjoyed its challenges, his broad smile is something which all those who knew him remember, and they remember it with a, a matching smile of their own. He loved to laugh, and as a Marine he was able to put all his many talents and gifts to work in a setting which enabled him to develop his great capacities for friendship and for hard work. Cheerfulness in the face of adversity, as Richard said, was one of Jason's enduring characteristics, which we remember thankfully today. And it's an essential quality, surely, for all those in the armed forces and for all the many others who serve our country and community in uniform and out of it. Cheerfulness in the face 
of adversity. It's a quality which says, no, we won't let this defeat us. We won't be beaten. We won't let the buggers get us down. It's that sort of attitude. And it's a quality and it's an attitude which we need in an uncertain and dangerous world. And it's a quality which will help us remake and renew that world in good and positive ways. Our community here in Bampton has certainly been drawn together in a new way. Not only today, but during the three long weeks since we learnt of Jason's death. It's sad that it often takes something shocking, like a young man's death, to make us examine our values and our priorities in life. But I think that Jason's death has done this for many people here. Year after year, as in communities up and down the country, we gather in Bampton the War Memorial and here in church to recall the sacrifices made in two world wars and in what is so often an easily said phrase, all the other conflicts, past and present. Well, today one of those other conflicts has made its presence felt in the heart of this village. Jason is one of several young people from Bampton serving in the forces today. Their families, their friends and neighbours have naturally been deeply touched by this event. And many others, perhaps only dimly aware of what those men and women have to go through, have learned something also as a result. The school children who joined those lining the route of the funeral procession this afternoon will also have had brought home to them in a hard but important way the meaning of all the lessons they have been given about the sacrifices made by their ancestors, their forebears in the Great War. And they will have seen that serving the community has its cost even today. That cost is very great. There are sadly too many services like this taking place in communities all over the country. And we also need to remember as we honour the dead that there are those also who have been maimed and whose lives have been destroyed or made very difficult by the injuries that they have received. And we should remember them also today. But let's not be content simply to sigh and shake our heads and say what a waste. Jason's short life was certainly not wasted. He packed a huge amount into those 21 years. He never wasted a precious moment of the time that was given to him. He put a lot in, a lot of energy and enthusiasm. He loved, he laughed, he did daft things, he did beautiful things. He was a devoted son and brother, the love of Victoria's life. He was a staunch and true friend and comrade. He was and he remains an example of how life can and should be lived. Not just for what we can get out of it, not just to serve the interests and comforts of number one, but to give yourself to and share yourself with others. And to give and share not just a little bit of yourself, but the whole of yourself. This full and ebullient life has now ended at least as far as this old world is concerned. But even here, the effect of Jason's life will go on inspiring and encouraging others, making people smile when they remember something he said, something he did. And his death, united with all those others who, like him, have made that ultimate sacrifice in service, his death will help others to live less selfishly, and with a greater determination to do good in the time that is theirs, be it brief or long. And for some here today, that will be reason enough to celebrate Jason, and to go from here not weighed down with sorrow, but with heads held high with hope in the heart. For some too, who dare to share the vision of St John, and to believe in the power of the love that flowed from that other life given up on the cross. 
our faith in the ultimate victory of goodness, selflessness, and love may also well be strengthened, as we see the pattern of Jesus Christ's life reflected in this young man today. For all of us, however, this life and this death should fill us with thankfulness and pride, as we realise that the human story is not simply a tale of doom and destruction, but it is possible to believe in new heavens and a new earth, and that death, in fact, will never have the last word. I leave the last word today to my fellow countryman, Dylan Thomas, who lines from his poem, And Death Shall Have No Dominion. And death shall have no dominion, Dead men, naked, they shall be one with the man in the wind and the west moon. When their bones are picked clean and the clean bones gone, they shall have stars at elbow and foot. Though they go mad, they shall be saved. Though they sink through the sea, they shall rise again. Though lovers be lost, love shall not. And death shall have no. Doing. Jason has passed through death and is now free. We salute his life as we commend him in love to the safe keeping of our Heavenly Father. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen.
out, in, 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 Thank you. 